the rumors are circulating. I hate rumors. In analytical work, this is disaster. We had also rumors that uh, Lukashenko was in coma. Mm-hmm. As a man uh, who should be in coma, he is acting quite efficiently, so. as we can see. But looking from a political point of view, it's ridiculous. This is absurd thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Putin is not interested in poisoning uh, Luk- Lukashenko. It's uh, out of the question. He needs him, and Lukashenko needs a Putin. And now Lukashenko is not acceptable for the West. It's not credible for the West. It's isolated. It's sanctioned, and and this is the best uh, option f- for Putin, I suppose. Hello, my name is Nicholas Furnival. You are watching or listening to an OSW interview. Today I'll be talking to Kamil Kwasinski, an expert from OSW's Belarus, Ukraine and Moldova department. We'll be discussing Belarus's future post-Lukashenko, whether that is the short-term future or the long-term future. So today we're going to be discussing uh, the health of uh, Alexander Lukashenko, who has led Belarus for nearly 30 years. He was visibly very ill recently, but he pulled through. What was wrong with him? Do we know? I am not a medical doctor, so I cannot say exactly what was wrong. Nor did you have access to the patient. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I even don't have direct access to the patient, to Mr. Lukashenko. Uh, we know that something was wrong, that he was uh, he was absent, but it wasn't first time. Uh, even many years ago, even 20 years ago, Lukashenko also disappeared. He, he was disappearing for a while and it happened. It happened to him. Uh, I know that he's not in very good condition. There is something. But uh, as a politologist uh, <laughs> graduated from political sciences, I'm not able to, to uh, give uh, full diagnosis uh, about his health. But politically, uh, it gives us a lot of doubts, a lot of questions, uh, what to do and what, how, how to act, how Belarusians will act without Lukashenko. Or, mm-hmm. for example, in case when Lukashenko is really seriously ill. Okay. Um- I do want to move on to that, but first, I imagine you're going to say you don't know, but I have to ask if he was poisoned during his trip to Moscow. I don't know. Yes, I, I, my, my first answer is I don't know, because I can I, I cannot know it. I, I have no evidence. But, but the rumors are circulating. I hate rumors. In analytical work, this is disaster. We had also rumors that uh, Lukashenko was in coma. Mm-hmm. As a man uh, who should be in coma, he is acting quite efficiently, so. as we can see. But looking from a political point of view, it's ridiculous. This is absurd thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Putin is not interested in poisoning uh, Luk- Lukashenko. It's uh, out of the question. He needs him, and Lukashenko needs a Putin. Uh, Lukashenko is a guarantor of Russian influence in Belarus. Is a guarantor of isolation of Belarus towards the West. Because uh, now Lukashenko is not acceptable for the West, is not credible for the West, is isolated, is uh, sanctioned, and and this is the best uh, option f- for Putin, I suppose. One day he will, nevertheless, pass, uh, and we want to discuss what will happen in that case. I thought we could start with the mechanics of it because I did some research, and I really do not understand the system at all. The some names I wrote down. The prime minister was deputizing for him recently. That's uh, Roman Halochenka. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, he would have to submit his resignation to the House of Representatives, which is the lower house. But any potential successor would be the head of the Council of the Republic, uh, Ms. Natalia Kachanova. Uh, could you? structure what I said in a way which I could understand, please. The easiest way is to say that Natalia Kachanova, this is legal successor of Lukashenko according to modified, uh, amend, amended constitution. Because mm-hmm. last year in February, so more than one year ago, there was a constitutional referendum in Belarus and co- constitution now is in a new version. According to, to this version, Mrs. Kachanova as a head of Council of uh, of the Republic uh, should be a successor, but of course there is a contradiction that that's why uh, appears this uh, this kind of uh, let's say mess in understanding uh, because according to a decree from 2021, uh, Prime Minister should be a successor, a temporary a successor, a temporary head of Belarus, head of the state, 
after after death or serious illness of Lukashenko. So which law would take precedence? Constitution is uh, constitution is more important, of course. That's why uh, this version with this option with Natalia Kochanova is uh, obligatory. This is theory, but uh, in practice, I think that Natalia Kachanova wouldn't be able to 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 keep power uh, long longer than two three weeks, and I think that uh, Putin also would be interested in uh, some military, uh, maybe maybe General Volfovich, uh, a secretary of the Security Council, very pro-Russian officer. Uh, to say that he's a uh, Russian is nothing to say. He's uh, almost like Russian in his mentally, uh, mm-hmm. his mental approach. So uh, I think that it could be better uh, option for Putin. But it would be completely against the constitution. He would have to carry out a coup. I understand. Y- yes, something like that. Or, for example, they could impose martial law or. Uh, some some similar solution. It's possible because Belarus, to some extent, uh, takes part uh, in a war, in special operation against Ukraine. So they they could use the in in this case threat uh, which is coming, from, for example, from Ukraine on or the West or NATO, hostile, of course, according to them, NATO. Perhaps a false flag incident to. Uh in, to act as a, yes. a pretext. In this kind of situation, in this uh, transitional period, very dangerous for Russian interest in Belarus, uh, any option is possible, any, any provocation. Uh, main goal is to keep power. So maybe I would say something very provocative, maybe not popular, but death of L- Lukashenko right now would be not very good option for Belarus because a successor could be even worse than Lukashenko, even more pro Russian, closer to Russia, more loyal to Russia. Okay, that is very controversial. He's not a popular figure outside of um, outside of Russia and Belarus. Uh, what about the optimistic scenarios? Because um, Lukashenko has a, uh, I don't know how to term her, a competitor. There is a, the leader of the opposition who claims she won the, the last presidential election, Svetlana Tsikhanovskaya, could she not find her way to power if Lukashenko dies? I'm afraid that not now. Not now when Russia is still, still strong. Russia could still dominate Belarus, uh, could have influence uh, in the country. Uh, in case of a successful counter-offensive of Ukraine, which was still expecting, uh, maybe, maybe something will change in Russia. Only in case of deep internal crisis in Russia, when Russia will be uh, will, will will be suffering some some contradictions, maybe some uh, some f- 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 fighting in in the state elites also. Uh, in this case, it it will op- it will be open some some window of opportunity for Belarus and for Belarusian opposition. Only in that case. Not now, when, uh, as, as I would like to repeat, not now when Russia is still very uh, influential uh, towards Belarus. So we are hoping for Lukashenko to hold on at least a couple of weeks longer than Putin. Uh, this is only theory or our wishful thinking. We cannot predict everything, but of course uh, the best option for Belarus as as I as I wanted to say, will be combination between a crisis, a deep crisis in Russia, the, between failure of Russia during the war on a battlefield in Ukraine, and deep crisis in Belarusian elites, when Lukashenko will be not able anymore to 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 keep power, or maybe maybe he he will be he will be forced to step down mm-hmm. from his position uh, uh, by whom. Mm, by part of uh, constructive, let's say, patriotic uh, Belarusian elites, uh, by people who who will understand that that uh, things in Russia are going wrong, and Russia is not anymore a supporter of uh, of Belarus because he is weak. Mm-hmm. This is potential, of course, in the scenario. It's not g- going now. Uh, we should be realistic. It's only it's only one of possible, one of many possible uh, scenarios. We have many options. Uh, so far, mostly in our imagination, not not on, not on the table. Okay, uh, today we're going a little shorter than we usually go because, uh, for better or worse, Lukashenko has recovered. But um, 
We um, on our website have a long form documentary, uh, Belarus Wasted Sovereignty. We'll put the link in the uh, in the description on YouTube. In this documentary, you said Lukashenko cannot imagine leaving power. So he simply has to die. He cannot say, I'm 68 years old, perhaps my time has come. Yes, it's true. I still support this <laughs> this this statement, which, which I made uh, at that time in our documentary. But very important factor is Russia. Uh, Russia is key factor. And only with Russian support at this stage, in context of full isolation from the West, Lukashenko could survive. Without the Russian support, Russian Belarusian economy, Belarus as a as a as a as a country, and especially authoritarian or half totalitarian regime created by Lukashenko is not able to survive only with support from Putin. That's why. I, I described uh, those uh, scenarios uh, of crisis in Russia as a chance, mm -hmm. as, a, as a chance, uh, pot potential chance for changes in Belarus. Okay. And I would like to just um, imagine the ideal scenario that uh, Russia is defeated militarily, the era of Putin ends, and Lukashenko loses power. 30 years ago, Belarus wasted its, its sovereignty. Is the future more optimistic? Are there different structures now than there were at the end of the, the fall of the Soviet Union? I think that uh, there is something optimistic. This is Belarusian society, part of Belarusian society. At the beginning of 90s or even at the end of 90s, we, we didn't have so much developed Belarusian civil society. Uh, now we have a lot of NGO, uh, mostly they are in, in exile but still they are active, uh, part of them are still in the country, they are very brave, they are still, they try to, to survive. And this is this, the most promising part of Belarusian society. People are quite aware of their rights, they, they, they know what they want, but now they have to be in exile and fight uh, from abroad with a regime or be silent in Belarus. Because because this is a matter of life, so we, we we now we are in very very difficult time, but it's not it's not forever. Uh, the the most promising capital uh, of Belarus is the people, who are who are quite different than they were in in the nineties. Okay, so for today that's all. Um, if something in this story develops unexpectedly, we will ask you to come back and comment again. With pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to keep up to date with this story and other stories in the region.